Uh oh. What? They're onto us. They're just trying to track our IP address. But we've been so careful, how could they find us? VPNs are often considered an essential part of your toolkit if you want to live a modern privacy conscious lifestyle. But when I was doing research for this piece, two computer security experts I chatted to emphasized over and over how VPNs are not a tool for privacy at all, because the VPN company is able to see everything you're doing. It seems that if you want to have actual privacy or security with a VPN, you have to set up your own. But that's not something that the average person has the technical know-how to do. So what is the solution for most people? Should we avoid commercial VPNs altogether? Well, not necessarily. There are actually a few reasons why a consumer VPN might be useful to you. And in this video, we'll dive into them. We'll also talk about how VPNs work and what to look for in a good one. Right then, let's see what you've got for us. VPN stands for Virtual Private Network, and it's a private network within a public network like the internet to connect remote sites or users together. Someone might set up one of these private networks for their employees who work remotely so that they can share information within their company safely whilst using the infrastructure of the internet. VPNs can also be used by anyone who wants to add an extra layer of protection to their internet usage. For example, if you're using public Wi-Fi in a cafe on an unsecured network, Work, a VPN is actually a good way to obscure your traffic from other people on the network. The VPN encrypts your data as it travels over the internet, so even if intercepted, the data can't be read. Anyone who uses public Wi-Fi, like at a coffee shop or airport, would be wise to use a VPN. VPNs are also a way to protect your online activities from being recorded by your internet service provider. Yes, without a VPN, your internet service provider, your ISP, can see what domain names you've been connecting to. There can be very good reasons to hide those. Or to stop the sites you're visiting from seeing your IP address. IP address is short for Internet Protocol Address, and it gives your device an identity when connected to a network like the internet to allow it to communicate with other devices over the network. Normally, when you connect directly to a website, they see your IP address. If you use a VPN, your data first goes to that VPN server before going out to the wider internet and to the site that you're trying to reach. So the website only sees the IP address of your VPN provider. IP addresses are not necessarily location specific, but over time they have been mapped with varying degrees of accuracy to physical locations. So using a VPN can help hide your physical location from websites that you visit. Also, if the VPN server is in another country, this can be a way to trick websites into thinking that you're located in that country. So some people use VPNs to spoof their location and help them access sites that are off limits to their own country, like Netflix or crypto exchanges. Now, not all VPNs are created equally. A lot of what I see is simply a combination of clever marketing and consumer confusion about how virtual private networks and even more broadly, the internet works. A big piece of evaluating a VPN provider is understanding how they make their money and how responsibly they handle data. First rule, if it's free, you're probably getting what you paid for. As they say, if you're not paying for the product, you usually are the product. And a lot of VPNs will make their money by recording unencrypted internet activity and selling the data. Even if they promise not to, it's difficult to verify. Next, location of the VPN provider can be important to consider. For example, an activist from France was recently arrested after email provider ProtonMail was forced by law enforcement to log his IP address. However, if the same user had used ProtonVPN, their IP address would have remained private because ProtonVPN is based in Switzerland, which has no logging obligations for VPNs. While some countries like Switzerland have good laws surrounding VPNs, many others require VPNs to report all the activity of their users and hand over logs to law enforcement. Even if the country has no log policies by default, many governments can actually force VPNs to log as the result of a direct order, like a national security letter in the US. However, within the current Swiss legal framework, the government there is unable to compel VPN providers to start logging IP addresses. While good VPN jurisdictions versus bad VPN jurisdictions are worth considering, they should also be taken with a grain of salt. There are many complex alliances for sharing data between countries, like mutual legal assistance treaties. EU countries have sharing agreements for data, the Five Eyes do also. But even if a country is not a member of the Five Eyes 
or the European Union, there is a lot of cooperation between law enforcement of different countries for handing over data. So many people question how helpful the location of a VPN is at the end of the day. This leads me on to the next important criteria for choosing a VPN logging policies. Facebook is directing users to download a VPN called OwnerVaf. Even if you're not on Facebook at that particular moment, they will still be tracking your browser. You want to choose one with no logging or low logging guarantees. This legally restricts a VPN from keeping records of your activity past a certain period of time. This means that they can't actually hand over your information if requested because they don't have it. Proton VPN's strict no logs policy was tested in a legal case in 2019, where they were ordered to turn over logs to help identify a user and were unable to comply because such logs didn't exist. Finally, the tech that the VPN uses is crucial. There are all kinds of different technical standards that can be used when a company sets up their VPN service. They might be deliberately using weaker encryption standards, or sometimes a VPN's heart is in the right place, but they just might not have the technical know-how to keep your data safe. On top of that, governments around the world are constantly trying to crack VPNs. The NSA's Office of Target Pursuit maintains a team of engineers dedicated to cracking the encrypted traffic of VPNs. But some technical standards, regardless of other compromising factors, do seem more secure than others. The Freedom of the Press Foundation, where Snowden is president, recommends using a service with the following VPN configuration. Authentication is the process used to confirm that you are in fact the VPN customer and not someone trying to impersonate you. And they recommend SHA-256. The Handshake sets the encryption keys for your VPN session, and they recommend using RSA 4096 or at least RSA 2048. And a data encryption cipher uses those keys for the actual encryption of data as it travels through a VPN connection. And they recommend using AES 256 GCM or AES 256 CBC. This all sounds super confusing, but you don't need to understand how it all works. And the technical specifications of a VPN provider should all be available publicly on their website. According to the Freedom of the Press Foundation, if they're not using these encryption standards, they need to have a good reason. But again, take this with a grain of salt, because even if your VPN provider is trying to create robust security, there are myriad ways that this can be compromised, unfortunately. Even with a VPN, you can't guarantee can't sure. that your carrier isn't still tracking. You. There are lots of layers on the internet, and each needs privacy protections. Security at the transport level doesn't result in security at the app level. Before we drown in technical details and I scare most of you off, here are some currently recommended services. Remember, companies change their products, and new research is being conducted all the time that changes the standards of what's considered secure. But at the moment, there are five VPNs that the Freedom of the Press Foundation say currently fit their criteria. Mulvad, TunnelBear, Viper VPN, iVPN, and Proton VPN. But keep an eye on sources that you trust, like Freedom of the Press, so that you can continue to make good choices about your privacy as available information changes. Another thing to note is that NordVPN, one of the most popular VPN options out there, is noticeably missing from their list. I reached out to their expert, David Huerta, about this, who confirmed that while Nord does seem to have a secure open VPN implementation and reasonable no logging policy, they have had some not great handling of security breach disclosures in the past. They have started releasing some semi-regular audits, but the most recent cover things like apps, not the server infrastructure, which is the more likely vector for a big hack, breach, or broken policy promise. The other strange choice that they made is only making these audit reports available to existing customers, unlike the recommended VPNs, which all make audit reports available to potential customers before they hit the buy button. So NordVPN might also be a reasonable choice. However, there is some hesitation on the business practice side of Nord, so David had trouble recommending recommending them, especially when those that do make the list tick all the right boxes and go further on transparency. A couple of other disclaimers about VPNs. Your own location can be very important when choosing whether to use a VPN. China's great firewall shut down a popular VPN. Because they're illegal in some countries like Russia and China, using a VPN in one of those countries
countries can actually make you stand out more, so keep that in mind. And finally, we're only able to know so much about any of these VPN providers with sufficient certainty. Even a lot of their transparency is self-reported, so at some point we're still taking these companies at their words. One good tip is if you catch a VPN provider lying about one thing, it's probably a good idea to not trust any of their claims. A lot of security experts don't recommend VPNs at all. If you're in a life and death situation, don't think that a VPN is giving you any protection. The VPN wasn't initially designed to be a privacy tool. So understand your own threat model before using them. That being said, for use cases such as work situations, IP obfuscation, and adding more protection to an insecure wireless internet connection, VPNs certainly can be a useful tool for helping you live a modern, privacy-conscious lifestyle. Well, now you know exactly where I am all of the time. Make me disappear.